This video will look at innovative ideas. It'll synthesize quite a few of the ideas we've already touched on in other videos on the topic of innovation. So for example, we'll look at market analysis, we'll look at the concept uh, itself, how the idea of the innovative idea, I should say, how that comes about and looks at the uh, market analysis, looks at uh, the whole development stage of the process, right from uh, conception, right at the very start, to market delivery. So we'll be touching on lots of these areas throughout this video, but as I said, they are dealt with in more detail on other videos on the module. So to start, let's talk about the concept development. Now the concept development process looks into the new idea in more detail, whether whether the idea is feasible, for example. Because we could have lots of ideas, but they don't necessarily mean they're good ideas. It doesn't mean that they're going to be commercial. They're going to sell or going to generate a profit for the organisation. They may just be um, ideas. So to that end, um, a critical appraisal of an idea is very important. And that in turn may require some sort of institutional structure or some sort of mechanism to evaluate the concept. In other words, to criticise it. Someone comes up with a good idea, an innovative idea. It needs to be criticised. It needs to be subject to analysis, scrutiny, um, subject to criticism, subject to uh, a process in which if it stands up, if, if it still succeeds, it's worth carrying forward. There is more focus taken into the market and development of the product. If possible, a, pro a prototype could be developed in order to test uh, to see if it's a good idea. So customers could get their hands on a prototype, try it out and give feedback to the organisation. At the, the very early stages, the company is really dealing with an idea. And it's important to move the idea from that sort of conceptual framework into something which is more tangible. So the customers can experience what's been proposed. And if the customers can experience it and give their feedback at an early stage, it could save uh, costly development if the idea is not seen to be good. Or if the idea is seen to be good, then the investment is justified, it's, it's worthwhile, and the feedback determines the, uh, the type of development as well as the speed of the development. Further research should be carried out towards the target market. Uh, it's always the case that information is good. Information is not just a set of facts, it is something that can be worked upon. And probably uh, the, if you like, the interface between engineering and marketing is what's going to determine whether a concept is carried through into production. We often see it in the car industry, on, we see it on television or in car shows. Uh, car companies make concept cars. These are not ones which are ideally suitable for driving in today's conditions. They're very futuristic, they're very uh, strange designs and have a lot of uh, modern uh, ideas built into them. But they're not in production. They're there to see what the reaction of the public is to the car. If the public feel feedback a lot of positive things about the car, a lot of positive uh, feelings about the car, then the car may go into production. Or some of the components or some of the ideas included in the car may be built into other cars. So research is fundamental to seeing whether a concept should be carried forward. Concept development relies on the following feedback from customers. 
do under do the customers understand the new idea? It may be the customers don't understand it. It depends. Depends on the nature of the product. If the product is very technical, and requires an expertise on the part of customers, then the market size may be very small and limited because only few people are that interested in the product. Um, do customers easily take to the product? Do they like the product immediately or does it take time for them to become adjusted to the product? So do customers understand the product, what, what the product will do? do? Does the product represent uh, distinct features? benefits for for customers for example uh, is there a need for the product companies may have lots of ideas for products but the products may not be needed there is no obvious gap in the market there's no obvious room in the market for the product so although the product seems to be a good idea technically or in terms of design it may not fit the market there is no obvious demand. Which begs the question, would consumers buy the product? Uh, they may buy it because they're curious, <clears throat> but will they spend a lot on it? Uh, what, would be, what would be the factors that inhibit their purchase of the product, that would stop them per, uh, purchasing? Um, maybe it's technical design, maybe it's know-how required on their behalf or maybe it's uh, it doesn't fit anywhere in their in their scheme of things they, they, they don't simply don't want it they, there's no need for it so why should they buy it would the customers buy the product instead of current brands in the market well what does the product have that the current brands don't have brands related to it what does it have what what's new about this product what does the product do that the current brands doesn't do is it possible to list out the advantages of the current product the one that's been proposed and match those against the existing products in the market to see what the advantage of the proposal is How are improvements suggested? At what stage can improvements be incorporated? Whereabouts in the development process can process, uh, processes be changed and the product altered in line with feedback from the market or from the marketing department or from customer surveys or whatever source of information has been used? Can suggestions uh, be incorporated into the product or at what stage is it that the product has to go through and that's it it, it can't be amended further again management uh, is required all the way through to carefully manage and consider all of these issues This stage, the business analysis stage, <clears throat> looks into the financial aspect of the new idea, whether it is financially feasible. After all, technically it could be a great idea, or technologically it could be a great idea. It could include lots of interesting electronics and lots of interesting uh, features, a very interesting design. But will it sell? Um, is it feasible? Will, will it sell at a price which will generate a profit? And will it sell sufficient numbers to generate a profit? Would the new product, in other words, generate enough cash flow? Or will it be a dead weight product, um, a very nice product, but simply not selling? It's not generating enough. It's a it's a, it's a drawback on the organisation. It's holding the organisation back. It's a drain on the, the cash flow. It's costing. The following are factors the business needs to consider. For a start, 
demand is the product at the right price how big is the market what's the potential of the market will the market expand over time will is it going to remain the same will it contract to getting smaller what's the purchasing power in the market um what proportion of incomes would customers be expected to lay out on acquiring this product and if they buy it what's the prospects of a repurchase how long will the product last before it needs to be replaced then look at the cost look at the total cost and the unit cost the total cost of production and and then the marginal cost how much does it cost to make that particular product look at the resources and the facilities required and see what could have been what could have been done had this product not been made if those resources were put over to a different product would it be a better use of their uh, of that resource would it be a better use of the facilities that's called the opportunity cost so look at the unit costs look at the resources and facilities required and see if they could be used better elsewhere look at the projections of continuing and future costs try to work out what's going to happen into the future as let's say output expands what will happen to cost look at the economics of scale or the economies of scale look at uh, as output grows will unit costs fall because the cost of the big capital equipment will be used over a greater range of output and therefore the unit cost of using it will fall is that the case and what's the expected break even for the product how many of these these items must the company produce before it breaks even and how does that break even figure relate to what the company knows of the market size and the market potential look at the competition as well other companies are not standing still they may have similar products in the pipeline they may be in the process of developing similar products look at the competitors strengths and their weaknesses can they produce better products or perhaps produce products uh, that are more attractive not just better but better styling better design and look at the future threat from competitors don't just look at what the competitors are doing right now what they did last year look at what they may do in the future because the competitors are constantly looking forward as well so when doing a business analysis it's necessary to try and figure out what the competitors are likely to do look at the need for investment for planning promotion advertising distribution channels it'll all cost money it all costs an investment it all it all needs to be approved so budgets have to be allocated but the budgets them, themselves have to be worked out and they have to be worked out within a framework that the organization can live with because the organization has perhaps other products that are running concurrently it's got overheads it's got labor costs it's got obligations throughout right throughout the organization so is the room within the, the within the the balance sheet is the room there to enable the growth of this particular investment potential is it possible to finance the development of this product and deliver it look at the profitability the projected profits the return on investment the risk the price strategies all of these impinge on profitability and how profitable is it likely to be what's the break even as i said earlier and will the market bear that amount of of purchase to enable the company to break even and go beyond into the area of 
profitability. Physical product uh, is produced and this stage evolves, the product development. So product development is when the decision has been made to make the product, to deliver it, then the product has to, has to be designed, set up. There is tooling costs. There is uh, space required, space uh, in, in terms of the physical space where the activity will take place, but also, if you like, space on the machines, capacity on the machines have to be set aside to enable this production to take place. The product needs to be developed and it needs to be tested out. And if it's successful, then that space and that uh, investment needs to be brought into play. Look at the packaging that's required. In other words, look at every aspect of the product, not just the product itself, but all of the product that goes to the market, including packaging. Look at the branding that's going to be required in terms of marketing and the investment marketing will have to make to get customers aware of the product and willing to, to make that purchase. Where will the product be positioned in the market? Uh, at what level? Is it at the higher end of the market or the lower end of the market? Uh, will it be in direct competition with competitors' products? Uh, is it a, a market that is well served at the moment or is there a, a real need for the product in the market? The product is then introduced to the target market for approval. If all of that is okay, a target market is selected and the product is launched in that market. So, is the product safe to use? Uh, will it be injurious to life and limb in the market? Will people get hurt if they're using it? What are the downsides? What are the dangers associated with the product, if any? Is it financially feasible? Is it going to generate a profit, as I said earlier. Is it easy to understand and use? If it's not, that's a barrier to purchasing and customers may be put off. Is it safe and cheap to manufacture? Uh, will there be a lot of breakage, a lot of issues associated with making it? Uh, will personnel be endangered in making it? Does it contain sharp parts or dangerous parts or electrical components or is it safe and is it cheap to manufacture look at the packaging and the branding and make sure it's attractive for customers if it's not they may not even get past opening the box and looking at the product if the box is off-putting or the packaging is off-putting they may not even go further just rejected by by looking at the the packaging so the packaging has to be designed and well delivered and does it meet the customer's needs with ease or does the customer have to do something does it involve an effort on the customer's part to use this product to set it up to assemble it is there work to be done when the customer buys it does he or she have to take it home and assemble it? And what's the quality control on the assembly? Are the instructions clear? Will there be a few parts missing? So they have to go back to the shop to see if they can get uh, replacements or get, get ones that are missing. So how easy is it to use? And is it eco-friendly? Because we live in a world that we're becoming increasingly aware of the impact we're making on the environment. Uh, we know how much waste we generate every year. We know what we're doing to the climate, to the air and to the atmosphere and to the oceans. So is the product eco-friendly? Because that may be a part of the decision to, to buy the product on the part of the consumer. 
testing the market well this stage involves testing the product to analyze its feasibility is it going to work so maybe it's a question of getting a control group or getting two groups of customers and uh, getting their opinions getting their opinions about a competitor's product uh, or a related product just to get feedback the product will normally be introduced to a specific region or a geographic area when it, uh, where it can be monitored and modified as necessary. So sometimes companies don't go for a total market launch. They, they ease it in. They, they start selling in one area. It's a new product in one area and they're getting feedback about the sales and what customers are saying in that area. Depending on that, they may modify the product and put it into the full market or they may even withdraw the product, take it off the market because it wasn't a success. Market testing has its benefits, but it allows the organization to observe customer and competitor, competitor uh, behavior. So market testing uh, is generally a good idea because it, it feeds back to the organization what customers are thinking. So market testing uh, is to be encouraged in this sense. It's a new product, it's an innovative product, and therefore um, feedback from customers is highly desirable. So isolating um, a small area, launching it in a small area, and getting the feedback from that area can help the company modify the product if need be before it's launched in a wider context if uh, the product successfully passes through the market testing then the product can be launched on a larger scale which is what I've just said now the limitations of market testing well testing a, a specific region does not indicate success of the product it may be unfortunate but perhaps the area picked does not represent the whole market area. Now we know this to be the case when we talk about international marketing. A product may be highly successful in one country, but not so successful in another country because of cultural differences, because of tastes, because of uh, the way the different peoples see beauty and see design and see taste. So it could happen on a region as well. Some regions may have very strong local bonds and they view the product through that prism. So when it's, if it's highly successful in that region and the, the business therefore thinks it's going to be successful nationally, the launch nationally, and they could be disappointed because, because it was successful in that region doesn't mean it's going to be successful in the, the whole country. Environmental conditions may change between testing and actual launch of the product. And that's another problem to bear in mind. Um, if the company tests the product in a given region, let's say, and then decides it's, it's a good idea to launch nationally, so now it tools up and increases production to launch it nationally. But by the time it's done that, something has changed in, in the society. There could be a new health warning or um, a government announcement about something or something else may have changed so that the it's no longer valid to compare the national market with the regional market which was used for testing. Because, uh, competitors become aware of organization activities and may disrupt plans. Well, competitors are not going to sit idle. So if they know an organization is launching a new product, they will step up their marketing campaigns for existing products. They will emphasize the quality, the safety, the utility of their products. Uh, they'll emphasize the cheapness and uh, the history and all the good things they've been doing anything to disrupt the launch of the new product from the competitor. 
but they are not simply going to sit by and let uh, the company launch a new product. They're going to react in some way. Now the product launch, well, this stage involves the national launch of a product and a target market. So the, the launch is, is when the company has enough confidence that this product is going to be successful that it decides to go with a national launch of the product. It'll pick a date in the future. It'll tool up. It'll supply, let's say, wholesalers. It depends on how, what the distribution channels are, but it may uh, supply wholesalers or it may directly contact retailers or it depends on how, how it's going to market the, the product. But it will prepare whatever channels it requires. The product begins its introductory stage of the product life cycle. So the product, once it's on the market, it enters the product life cycle. It will slowly pick up sales. That's the, according to the product life cycle, uh, the uh, sigmoid curve that you've met in marketing. And there will be a phase in the middle where it becomes highly successful. And then it's a phase where it starts to die away because it's uh, it's seen as old-fashioned and in need of replacement. So there are stages that we can anticipate in the, the life cycle of the product. But right at the start, it comes in at the early phase, obviously, and gets ready for increasing sales. Now, the factors to consider, well, the timing of the launch, the, ideally the timing of the launch should be associated with good news, good news nationally. It should be at a time of the year when the weather is quite nice as well, uh, puts people in a good mood. Uh, it should also take into account what the competitors are doing and the prices they are charging, and but also look at the the state of the economy how many people are unemployed in the area or in the economy um what's the rate of inflation do people feel good about the future there are many factors to take into account when launching product particularly an innovative product how will the product be introduced to the market will it be uh simply advertised will it be promoted on a local level? Will there be free samples? Uh, will it be door to door? How exactly will the word be put around about this product? How will the customers get to know about it? And where will it be launched? National, regional, um, or even local? How will it be launched? It, where where will it where will it uh, be put? Um, if it's national, there may be a risk of national rejection, which would be very expensive. If it's local, then the investment is not as much. But then it has to be done in many other regions as well. It has to be phased into those as well. But it's a decision that needs to be made. Now, what makes a successful product? Well, introducing a new and unique product which provides um, for a certain need or want. There must be a perceived need for the product. The company must be aware that customers want this. You should try to discover that in advance of any development perhaps doing it through focus groups, through talking to customers, feedbacks to the marketing department, contacts with sellers and wholesalers and retailers and online sellers, checking to see what is it the customers talk about. And then designing a product to meet that requirement. There should be a niche in the market. There should be a gap in the market. And 
the the definition of entrepreneurship as alertness to profit uh, potential, profit opportunities, which is quite a famous definition put forward by Israel Kirzner. That definition, alertness to profit opportunities, should be what drives the development. The entrepreneur within the organisation should perceive of some gap in the market, some part of the market that's not serviced, and where if a product was developed, it would satisfy that part of the market. The product launch stage is well thought out and planned. That's important. If the launch is a disaster, the product, the chances are, will be a disaster. It will not be taken seriously. So it's important for the organisation to ensure that professionals are involved to make sure that every aspect of the, the launch is planned and rehearsed so that it's delivered very smoothly into the market. There's no controversy, there's no failure. So there's nothing negative associated with the product. Nothing that will put off the, the customers. The product must be of good quality and deliver its promise. So it must be, it must be of good quality. It must be perceived as value for money. Good quality. And whatever the advertising agencies or the advertising section of the business are saying about the product, the positive aspects, then those must be delivered. If the company says the product will last three years, it must last three years. If the company says um, it can be fixed within a week, then it can be fixed within a week, should it break down. If it says uh, it is setting the fashion, that's a bit more nebulous, but perhaps it's got a good design, an interesting design, uh, one that fits with current day uh, living styles. What makes a pro uh, product fail? Well, poor market research. The company does not know what the customers want and it makes a product hoping that the customers want it. The product could be too complex to understand and use. Uh, it may come in a box, the product, with an instruction book. And the instruction book could be very elaborate and very complicated. And that would put off the customer. Customers don't want to spend hours studying a manual. They want the product as much as possible to be on off. And when it's turned on, it does what they want. When it's turned off, they're finished with it. They don't want to necessarily sit down with the manual trying to decode the manual, understand the sequence. And it may have involved lots of manoeuvres where two buttons have to be pressed simultaneously and a third button pressed for three seconds and the light will flash four times. It's too complicated. They don't want it. Not enough attention is given to the mar uh, marketing launch and distribution. It could be that the company doesn't rate the need for an elaborate uh, market launch or, or does not even have a market launch to just put it out there and, and see what happens. Well, in that case, the customers will not know about the product. If they don't know about the product, they're not going to buy it. It needs to be brought to their attention. Customers need to know what the product is and what it will do and, and why they need it or why they want it. The product could be too advanced for the market. Sometimes products are ahead of their time and that customers don't see an obvious need for it, so they're not going to buy it, uh, or it doesn't fit easily with what they've already got. Because if they get this product, uh, there may be no peripherals for it. It, it may be um, some piece of electronics uh, that has 
got peripherals, or it should have peripherals, but the peripherals haven't been developed. They're on the way. They will be developed next year. Well, if that's the case, they're not going to buy the product this year. So it may be too advanced. It may be launched in advance of when it is really not just wanted and desired, but when the complementary or the supplementary programs and devices and plugins are available. When that's the case, the product would be more successful. Sometimes products fail because unexpected events occur during the product development process. Um, during production, suddenly the company realized that the components will not fit smoothly into the, 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 to the design or the dimensions that they have said that the product will be. The, the, the need to expand uh, the product. The product will be bigger than they promised. Well, customers don't want a big product. They want a, a small product that's compact. But for technical reasons, the company can't deliver that. So again, the product could fail for that reason. It may not deliver its promise. If the, uh, the company said the product will have a, a lifespan of three years and it only lasts six months, then reputation of the product will be damaged. Customers will go on forums and uh, word will get around. This product was unreliable. And it could damage not just the product, but damage the whole organization and damage other products that the organization is making. The product, the, the organization will be seen or the company will be seen as selling faulty products, inferior products. So it must deliver on whatever it is say. It could be also that there is simply no demand for the product. It's put on the market, customers look at it and think, I have no need. I don't want it. I don't know what it does. I really don't want to spend any money on it now. Um, I'm not interested. There's no demand. It can happen. So even though the management are very enthusiastic, and it could also be the case that they've done market research which suggested the product would be well received. They just happened to be unlucky that the market research they did was a biased sample. And they picked up people who were enthusiastic about the product, whereas the general market were not. It's unfortunate, but could happen. Packaging, branding does not attract customer attention. I said earlier, uh, if it's in a box that looks like it's not very appealing, they're, they're not even going to open the box. They're assumed that the product inside is not very appealing. It has to be packaged and delivered in a way that makes it attractive. It encourages the customer to want to know what's in the box, to look at what's inside the box, because the packaging itself is part of the product. Now, there's a big debate about this, of course, given, given uh, what we're doing to the planet. And we think there's too much waste. And, and once the box is open, it may be just put in the bin and disposed of. And the planet can't cope with this. We live on a, a small in a small planet that's out in space. That's all. This is all we've got. And as we pollute it more and more, we're polluting where we live, and we're polluting it for future generations. So customers may look at the the packaging, think the packaging is not attractive, therefore they will not buy the product. The product fails. But on the other hand. Perhaps the organizations should look at ways of packaging and delivering the product that is nicer to the environment. And that would also encourage customers, many customers, to pay attention to the product. So the whole idea of packaging and branding and its relationship to sales could be debated in two ways. On the one hand, the packaging attracts customers and therefore packaging will be part and parcel of the product. 
on the other hand some customers may be uh, may may be put off by the packaging and think what a wasteful product the packaging is because it needs to be disposed of and uh, that debate goes on so in, in this video we've looked at quite a lot related to the development of innovative ideas and how companies can take innovative ideas and make them commercial deliver them onto the market and some of the upsides and downsides associated with new uh, product development but that's all we're going to deal with here so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching